I'm not a big media press access person. I personally don't need it. Not necessarily the words you want to be hearing from your Secretary of State, especially when it's following a trip to the DMZ in Korea. Why is Rex Tillerson so reluctant to give the media access? Well, I mean, he claims that he would like to be able to settle diplomatic issues before announcing them. He says, I don't really need to talk to reporters. I've been very good, you know, negotiating all kinds of things as a business person internationally for years. It'll save me money and time on my plane, yada, yada, yada. I, I don't know. I mean, what he really wants, but... He's clearly decided early on to kind of mimic what's going on with the press and the rest of the Trump administration. You, you talk about the, the efficiencies that come with it. Is that maybe one of the growing pains that's a result of somebody coming from corporate America, a CEO now in, in doing the people's work? Well, I think so. I mean, it's it's that sort of low-key approach. We don't want to be on the front page. We, we basically want to do our work and not seek the limelight. I mean, you know, Tillerson was known, but he wasn't known in the kinds of circles that he's he's in now. And having that kind of scrutiny day in and day out is uncomfortable for him. I mean, you can see it at when you when you watch him on uh, when they do have some access. Mm-hmm. He says very little. Uh, he he doesn't go over to the cameras, uh, and and then he moves pretty quickly to get to get off screen. So I mean, it's 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 a and you're you're watching this after John Kerry, who had been in the limelight as a senator and a secretary of state, and and Hillary Clinton, who him, yeah. you know who was you know first lady, senator, uh, secretary of state. They understood that you could use the media especially in diplomacy, to to push forward the agenda of the administration. The problem is, no matter what his motivation, stories can occur where you need to have, at the very least, a pool reporter, a pool photographer on hand. For example, when he was in South Korea, he was supposed to meet with the interim president and other diplomats, and there was a report in a Korean newspaper that he didn't meet with them because he was, quote, fatigued, whatever that means. There were no American media, well, there was one reporter, a reporter chosen to go along but she was not chosen as a pool reporter, and so she didn't immediately ask questions about that. And so who are we supposed to believe? Are we supposed to believe a Korean news source or our own journalist in telling us whether the Secretary of State might have a health issue? I mean, this is this is going to be a problem not only for Tillerson, but for others within this administration who use this same sort of ploy. Things are going to happen. It's not a question of if, but when. And... If you're not there to give the information on behalf of not just the Trump administration, but the people of the United States of America, especially in the case of Secretary of State, bad things can happen. And that's the problem here is that this I I don't want to have I don't want to be dealing with the press. That's one of the things that's really going to cause a problem. And I I hope the public's not confused by all of this. The journalists who go along Mm -hmm. on these trips with the Secretary of State, they or their news organizations pay for that. They're not getting a free ride on the behest of the federal government. News organizations pay pay a lot. They pay a lot. I mean, in in a lot of this, it seems like every story is, is painted with this political brush of the Trump administration against the media. And this is one of the, in this area, Mm -hmm. I think is is where there needs to be a definite line drawn to say, wait a minute, this is the press covering the business of the United States. This is the battle worth fighting.